If you're looking for an affordable aftermarket lower grill option to make a statement on your 2018 and newer Mustang that also incorporates some very cool LED lighting, well then you'll wanna check out the DRL equipped honeycomb option shown here today. Now this option will feature a factory style lower grill opening complete with that honeycomb material. But of course the big appeal here is gonna be the four bright white LED running lights on both sides, along with your included wiring harness for right around 200 bucks. Now install will require the removal of that front bumper along with some very minor wiring here guys. So figure middle of the road, two out of three wrenches on the old difficulty meter and a couple of hours or so to complete from start to finish. But as always, hang with me for a bit and we're gonna walk you through that job later in the video. So again, this is a very unique lower grill option in the category, thanks largely in part to the LED daytime running lights that I will say have been implemented in a very Mustang-ish way. And what I mean by that is, yes, even though technically there are four bars per side, they give off that kind of tri-bar appearance reminiscent of the taillights or even the gill lights found in the headlights of the S550 Mustang. So I will say with that in mind, it does flow very well with the stock lighting and really doesn't look too out of place. But helping to maintain that consistent look here with the lower grill is the honeycomb mesh material that will fill the middle part perfectly and again flow with that factory upper grill along with many aftermarket upper grills currently available here on the site, which again gives this thing some flexibility. Now speaking of those aftermarket upper grills, I've noticed a lot of our customers have opted to pair this lower grill up with uh, the RTR upper grill for kind of a double dose of aftermarket LED lighting. That really does make a statement. But as always guys, feel free to check out those customer submitted images uh, to see what I am talking about. Switching gears and talking construction, you are gonna find a very similar build to that of your factory lower grill and that is the reinforced durable ABS plastic material throughout. Now the lower itself has been designed to be a complete factory replacement. This is not an overlay or anything like that, but at the same time, there's no modification to make all of this happen. You simply are gonna pop out that factory lower grill and snap this guy into place. Of course, at that point, you will need to use the included wiring harness to get everything wired in and operated properly, but really not that big of a deal. And to give you a better idea of how that will all go down, feel free to check out our detailed walkthrough and tool breakdown right now. Tools used for this install are a ratchet, 10, 8, 7, and 5.5 millimeter sockets, a clip removal tool, wire cutters, strippers, and crimpers, some spade connectors, and some zip ties. For this install, your front bumper is gonna to have to come off of the vehicle. There's only a few hand tools that are required to get the job done, and I'm gonna walk you through every step of the process. So let's get started. Starting with a clip removal tool, I'm gonna to pop out all of the clips for the radiator cover, and this is gonna expose the upper hardware for the bumper, and then I'll remove that next. Along the top of the bumper, there are eight screws that need to be removed. Six of them are eight millimeter heads, you can see those here, and two of them are 5.5 millimeter heads, you can see that one right here in the corner. So I'm gonna start with my 5.5 millimeter socket and remove that from the bumper. So I pulled the front wheels off of the vehicle just to give you guys a better view of what I'm doing here inside the inner fender liner. Uh, I need to remove the clips for the inner fender liner and pull it back out of the way and that's going to reveal some 10 millimeter nuts here on the inside corner of the bumper that I'm going to have to remove. So I'm going to use my clip tool here and I'm going to pull these clips out of the way and then I can fold back my inner fender liner to get to those nuts. Now that I have my inner fender liner pulled back out of my way, I have good access to these two 10 millimeter nuts here at the corner. So I'm gonna use a 10 mil on my ratchet, pull those off, and then I'm gonna repeat the same exact process on the other side of the vehicle. 
So the next thing I'm gonna do is remove the belly pan from the bumper. I can actually remove the bumper with the belly pan still attached, but because I'm gonna to have to be working on the grill on the back of the bumper, it's just gonna be easier for me to pull the whole belly pan off of the vehicle. And in order to do this, I'm gonna use my clip removal tool and a seven millimeter socket to remove all of the screws on the bottom of the belly pan. The last thing I'm gonna do is unplug the light connections on the back of my bumper. And once I have these off, I can lower my car down and pull the bumper off. All right, now I'm ready to pull my bumper off. I have my corners pulled out and I'm just going to lift up to clear these little dowel pins in the front and pull away slowly. And now I can work on my grill. The grills in this bumper are secured into place using a series of barbed clips that go all the way around the perimeter of the grill. Now, in order to get access to all of these clips, I'm gonna have to remove the bumper reinforcement, which is held in the exact same way as the grills, once again with some barbed clips that I'm gonna use my clip tool to gently pry back and remove from the bumper. With my reinforcement piece moved out of the way, I have access now to all of the clips along the perimeter of the grill, and I'm gonna do the same exact thing as I did with the reinforcement piece and just bend the tabs back and work my way around until all of the clips have released. As I work my way down this grill, I'm gonna make sure to keep a little bit of upward pressure so that none of the tabs re-engage while I work on the other ones. Now I can remove the grill from the bumper. Now we can go ahead and install our new grill into place and it clips in the exact same way as the factory grill does. Just line up all of your tabs, make sure that they are started into the slots. And once you have them all lined up, then you can just give the grill a little tap on the back to engage the clips. Now I can make the connection for my wire harness. This is gonna power up the LED strips that are in this lower grill. And then I'm gonna secure the slack to these loops here on the back of the grill with some zip ties. I'm just gonna give myself enough slack on this wire harness to tap into my running light wires here up on the bumper. And then I'll secure the rest of this with zip ties. The next thing I'm gonna do is I stripped back a little bit of the wires for the end of this wire harness, and I'm going to crimp on a couple of spade connectors. I'm gonna use some male spade connectors as our vehicle already has some female spade connectors tapped into our running light circuit so that I can just plug these in, and I'll show you that in just a minute. Once the new grill is clipped on and secured into place and your wire harness has been cleanly zip tied and tucked out of the way, you can reinstall your bumper reinforcement and clip it in. So as I mentioned earlier, the wire harness for our vehicle, for our running lights, has already been tapped into during a previous install. The wire you're gonna be looking for is this green wire here with the orange tracer. I have a spade connector that will allow me to plug into this, as well as my black ground wire. This will allow me to turn on the DRLs that are inside the grill when I turn on the DRLs for the vehicle itself. Now that all of my grill is installed and my wiring has been tackled, I'm ready to install my bumper back onto the vehicle and this is gonna be pretty much in the reverse order of the removal.
Since I'm already up top here on the bumper, I'm actually gonna put my screws in along the top to hold everything in place while I work my way down. Once again, using my eight millimeter socket and my five and a half millimeter socket. Now that I have everything hanging properly, I can plug my light connections back in. I'm gonna plug my power wire for my uh, grill light into the power wire I tapped into and the ground wire into my tapped in ground wire. And then I can plug this right back into the back of the fog light. So now I can reinstall my 10 millimeter nuts for the corner of the bumper. And then I can reinstall all of my inner fender liner hardware. Next, I can reinstall my inner fender liner hardware. I'm gonna install the upper three clips that I removed earlier in this video, and then the remaining three that are down here will get reinstalled when I put my belly pan back into place. Now I can do the same exact thing on the other side of the vehicle. Now I'm ready to put my belly pan back into place. This is gonna be a little bit tricky as you have to get everything lined up and then get your screws started. Now I can reinstall all of my seven millimeter screws. Finally, you can reinstall your upper rad cover and all of the push clips. And that's gonna wrap up this review and install of the Honeycomb style lower grill with LED DRL stripes. Thanks for watching and for all things Mustang, keep it right here at AmericanMuscle.com.